started. We should get going. We should get going. Okay. <laughs> so um, Mike, Mike was kind enough to do a tutorial today about hard surface modeling. Are you recording, Mike, or not yet? I'm going to start in about a second. Yep. Starting recording. Okay. All right. Hard surface modeling with Mike. Let's do it. You have to share your screen, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that would help. Uh, here we go. All right. Can you guys see Quill? Purple background. Yes, sir. All righty. Let's get going. So, all right. So hard surface modeling. So I'm going to cover a few things in this. Here's, here's a hot rod that I made. I made car buff in case you didn't know. And, um, uh, this is like a good example. Uh, I mean, it's it's a car, but you can imagine uh, anything non-organic or mechanical could be made this way and is made this way. Uh, I'm going to show you the quill way of doing it, which is really unique, nice, uh, and like allows you to be draw. But at the same time, it's the way you model anything. Um, so the principles I'm going to cover are the idea of form as it's defined by curves. So cross-section curves. And curves are something every 3D modeler, hard surface modeler understands. And a curve is just a curve. It's a spline. And when a curve is extruded along a path, you get a surface, comp complex surface. Uh, so that's what we're basically doing to make something in 3D. And the second thing is how, uh, basically taking off from what Goro did last week, uh, light and color, how that affects 3D objects, but specifically uh, hard materials, uh, hard surfaces, and in this case, something reflective, like a car, okay? So here's the scene we're gonna do. I'm gonna make this hot rod, hopefully as close as I can today. And essentially, it's got a drive loop like this, right? Which is the way Goro has shown us to do a drive loop, but, uh, what you're what I'm going to basically do is start by modeling a wheel and then move to uh, the rest of the body. And the idea there is that uh, the like a construction of a wheel is a great example of hard surface modeling. So, oh, that's the ready ready bake version. Oh, now let's go to this guy. Okay, so we're in a fresh scene. Um, the first thing we want to kind of understand is the idea of reflections and how they work on a curved surface. So I've got some reference for you here. So here's a car. Here's a uh, car. We're going to do a black car, a black reflective shiny car. Um, and the idea, first of all, one of the key things when you want to model something, um, unless you're making it up completely, is to have reference. And the, the, the idea of reference is not just for pictures, but also specific views of something called orthographics, which is dead on uh, views of something that show it from the perfect side, front or top. So this is like a front orthographic view example. Um, this would be the side orthographic view uh, as close as you can get of the hot rod we're going to model today and you can see some of the key things i've done like wheelbase wheelbase is how long a car is and typical car wheelbases are uh three and a half three and a half wheel lengths so whatever the diameter of a wheel is three and a half of those spaced apart is about your average automobile for four people um Black paint, the way it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a desert, a, a basic, the perfect environment to test reflections. Let's say it's the desert. Um, here's an example of a black car paint that's reflective. What you're seeing is the blue of the sky reflecting down, bouncing off of this curved surface to your eye. And so the more normalized that ray is, like straight into your eye, the clearer you see the car paint. The more glancing or that normal is, so way up here on the car hood or way back here on, on this angle, the more you're going to see the blue, the, the environment itself. And that's why you get gradations, um, perfect gradations. And then what you see here is the tree line. Uh, that's what's reflective. Here's another really good example. 
Um, this car is black, but what you're really seeing is the blue of the sky. The closer it gets to your eye, the more deeply you see into it. It's just like water. Uh, you're going to see the black of the car paint. The more glancing the angle, the more you see the sky. Same with the ground. And the sharp reflections you always get on car paint, on reflective things, are just what you see out here. Okay? So that's kind of the idea. Uh, and now we're going to talk about, like, hard surface modeling. So you're like, how do I make a wheel? You can make, you can make stuff in Quill the same way you make it in anything else. It's just that it's not going to necessarily be welded vertices. So let's start with the car wheel. Like, um, car wheels are complex, but the way I would do something like this is the reference. Here's a profile of a car wheel. Go into the, and I'm going to start by basically making a few things. I've, I've actually made a few things here ahead of time. I've made a sunset sky dome, just a gradation. And I've made a distant background, which is just something to reflect into these trees, into the car paint, uh, and a ground, ground plane. Okay, so, but we're going to work on the car. So let's make a new group. All go in there, make a new paint layer. Call it wheel front um let's give that a group call it wheel front put this in there uh, that way we can do more with the wheel and just manipulate it all using the group okay so with wheel front paint layer let's start painting this profile the way i'm going to do it is essentially uh, starting at the top, I'm going to make a cross section of this thing as a ribbon and then revolve it perfectly around the center. Can this you hide the of... other references, Mike? So yes, gonna... yes. And the key with reference, too, is bringing it in, however you're going to bring it in, you want to... You want to uh, select it here. Um, and go here and do reset pivot reset transform that'll set it perfectly to the cardinal axes of quill um, and then you can scale it and move it to place using the, the gizmo but and so now when i use a brush tool and i'm here i can you're still on the image layer oh, sorry uh, i can do something like this i'm going to also turn on uh, the the polygons so you can actually see the polygons i'm creating when i paint uh, i'm going to go in this direction and i'm generally the idea is really all you're doing is a a sort of a crude construction of this thing and you don't really have to be that accurate either what I really care about more is, is getting the proportions of a wheel right. Um, I mean, the thing about tires is you can, they're deceptive in how complex they are. And what you want is if you want it to really feel right, there's a few key things you need. You need it to break at some point here and start to go inwards towards the hubcap. And that's what's going to give you the sense that it's like a tube or a donut versus just a flat disc. And the reason why you're not doing like one long stroke and grabbing it and bending it is because yeah. you won't be able to be perfectly parallel, right? You won't be able to be perfectly parallel. And even though these have overlaps, that won't matter. What will mm -hmm. matter is having a nice clean ribbon. I'll show you because when I revolve it, everything yeah. is going to be perfect. That makes sense. And, and the more accurate you are here with these strokes and line them up, the cleaner your model can be. So you can get crazy if you want. I'm just going to do it sort of quickly, um, but here we go. So yeah, I'm just surprised that uh, with that amount of strokes, it's still 
performant, right? Mobile ready. So totally, and you can yeah. optimize this. And if I drew this really huge and shrunk it down to be even higher poly, but yeah. I'm gonna basically go with this, right? And then do essentially a what is the like back of a um, hubcap? You know, like the just a backside, or maybe the brake disc would sit or something. Okay, so that's that's one half. We want this curve here to get like a nice dome. Well, again, lots of ways to do this, but you know, you can just make a big, um, a big like sphere if you wanted to. You don't have to do it this way, but I like to be sort of accurate because again. fashion design it's like sketching and drawing is a big part of it it's not just about accurate machining the gesture is really important and that's what i love about quill is it lets you play with both it lets you do the freehand sketchy part as well as the accurate part if you need it okay so there's like a good cross section of a wheel um what you do now is grab it all and move the pivot down to the center part you can get more accurate with this but i'm going to go with this right so there it is and then i just see it's just one of these <laughs> you so can see how high poly the thing is right because i wanted to show you oh, what, yeah. what a really detailed wheel could look like right this is giving me a uh, flashbacks to when i made my couch for the work from home yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And if you wanted to distort this, you use the grab tool, you know, like to do fun abstract shapes with it. But I'm just saying, like, this is essentially how you would construct this. And then if you need to optimize it, you just optimize it. It's pretty good. Decent. Um, for that demo, I may not need wheels this detailed, but I'll go ahead and use this anyway because it's kind of fun. Um, so what you want now is to like just select the regions and colorize them. So the first thing is just get it all black. And then I do see we want to select our ref. So we can hide the this guy now and go back to our side view of our car. I think the folder, uh, no, there it is, yeah. Oops. Oh. Actually, I want to keep the pivot right where it is instead of messing with it, but it's going to get to about the rough scale just so I can. Okay, so then we're going to just go around and colorize this guy using that so it's got the white wall here right and 
and Daniel also mentioned this last week, you over-select and then deselect is the way you get stuff quickly. Right. Do um, you ever um, separate it now into layers so it's easier to select? Or? Yes, except with like the white wall, I don't really care. Yeah. Like that part, I don't care as much. Um, but I will when I do the hubcap. Yeah, that makes sense. And only because when this wheel is spinning, uh, to get the chrome reflection to work in Quill, I'm actually not going to move the hubcap and keep it still and just yeah. jo jostle it, right? And that's just a, a side effect of working like it's chrome. So you got to have it keep the horizon line in the same place. Um, but everything else can actually physically spin. So, okay, so there's like my white wall, and then I want to do the interior here. It's like, sometimes I do split it up because I may want it, like, not have a hard time. But in this case, it's so simple to select yeah. it, honestly, that it doesn't matter. Um, get our red, okay, and then let's grab this. And now I'll move that to a new layer and call it Chrome Center. Okay, so, and on that guy, it's a good example of how you paint uh, materials, right? So you've got the sky reflecting. This dark band is whatever is reflecting out here compressed down into, you know, a tight mess essentially <laughs> and then your ground plane so if this is in the desert uh it'll be generally bluer well we're going to do sunset but for the sake of this let's go with blue same color yeah you want to bring your ground and your background so we could yeah let's go ahead and do that then and we can match it to desert. that so here's here's a, a ground plane like the desert and here is sky dome let's turn it off. okay and here's a, something to reflect out there. It almost doesn't matter. It could be darker, by the way. I didn't want it to be distracting. Um, okay, back to Chrome. So the blue of the sky roughly is going to get painted in here. Um, let's do a quick nudge on this. So you pass it down. And what he just did is um, he had some Z fighting going on because there was like, um, flickering. Um, yeah, it was flickering because um, planes are exactly mathematically correctly on top of each other. So just to fix the flickers, so you just have to just nudge it just a little bit and then it would go away. And that's basically all I do is dust the color of the ground on the bottom, color of the sky on the top of this dome, and I'm going to darken the middle arbitrarily. You know, so that it doesn't, almost doesn't matter. You can sit here and draw special reflections too if you wanted to, or only select um, certain parts of this. It's also not required. But that's essentially nice. it. And you can also do like a dodge to get like a hot spot if you wanted to, but it really kind of depends on your. Right, so that's kind of what I would imagine is reflecting out there. Remember, as your surfaces converge, you, everything sort of distorts, and, and and the reflections also, and the lighting also compress. You know, you get so everything gets high, more high dynamic range um, towards the centers. Okay, so there. What, there's Mike, a, what Mike was just doing is also like um, repeating what I uh, was talking about yeah. last week. Is the environment matters how you colorize anything in your painting right so you like cool. even even when mike wasn't showing the background he thought of what is around it so you should be always aware what is around you in order to be able to define your colors yeah i mean i'll do it really quickly just to show you what a if i got rid of the ground and all this Um, that does not look right anymore. So what I would ha what I really want to do in, a, in if that chrome was um, whoops duplicate that 
Um, what I really want to do is paint this the color of the sky. So in this case, it would be like uh, much bluer, and the desert ground would be what it is. So that now feels like I'm in this atmosphere. All I changed was the sky. You're actually reflecting this now. So anyway, that's the idea behind Chrome. Um, okay. And let's go back to the car. So, okay, so there's my wheel. The other thing I wanted to probably do is capture that like inner dark band in there. So let's go. Yeah, 20 minutes in, by the way. Okay, real quick. And this is where you can, like, you know, you don't have to go crazy, but I like, I like doing a little bit of. Defining a form. So you're thinking of this as it's ambiently lit because the reason is this wheel's going to turn. It's going to animate. So if I, if I was illustrating this, I would be, um, I'd be doing this. I darken here, brighten here, right? Like that. But I don't want to do that because as it spins, it'll look like it's weird. So what I'll just generally do is darken that whole band. Because, whoops, go back. And I want to do it fairly evenly. Because I just more want to get the distinguishing of the form uh, rather than the lighting. I can show you a trick how to get this highlight to work while this is spinning afterwards. Um, same with this white wall. I would technically darken this, but since it spins, I can't. Anyway, the other thing I do in my thing stylized wise is I draw some lines. This is where Quill is amazing. You can't really do this in a 3D tool, but it adds a lot of character and it is the way car designers draw. You know, uh, so I can do, so if I can do this. Get like uh, something on the wheel as it's spinning because what you what you, what kind of helps a wheel look like a wheel is the tread, right? And you don't want to sit there and model all of that. And what's great is if I was illustrating cars or sketching cars, I'd do it the same way. I'd do a quick line. It's sort of the way Daniel described when he was drawing characters. Then he went to do the corner of the mouth. He didn't actually model all that. He just drew a quick gestural sketch. It's like cartoony. This is very similar. Uh, car design, all sorts of things do this. So, you know, this is what's amazing about Quill to me, is I can do both of these at the same time with the same tool. Um, okay, so there's that. That's kind of cool. Once When this thing starts spinning, these will give it even more of a sense of motion. Otherwise, you won't notice like, you kind of want to space them out differently because tire treads are not evenly spaced. Okay, that's good enough, right? So that's my wheel. Um, now I'm going to get rid of that. And this is also, what's nice is this is centered perfectly. So when it spins, it'll look good. It's actually not we're pretty close. Yeah, um, it's because of your lines, right, that you added. The lines, you're right, yeah. you're right. The actual model itself is actually the lead. So. But you know what I like about that stuff is it, it adds to the That's rotation. Fair, fair. You know? It totally yeah. does. And in a way, like, it's going to look, honestly, the other one I did was way more movement, and it's fine. So, as and long also, as you're... Like, a real tire would do the same because the 
ground that's not even, right? Totally, totally. And it, like, it totally works. Um, it almost looks too mechanical if you don't have a little variation, a little noise in the jitter. In fact, when you animate at the very end on high def stuff, you do add some. Okay, so let's get this in here. Uh, my picture is not perfect that I'm going off of, so I want to stick to reality here. Uh, the back wheel of a hot rod is usually a smaller wheel, thicker uh, tire. So, but I can use the same thing if I wanted to um, by just sort of stretching it. So I can show you that. Um, let's see, so I'll, that's my wheel front. Let's duplicate it. How come I'll, you know so much about um, proportions and stuff about cars? Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, I studied car design, got a degree in it. In oh, college. you did? Okay. Yeah, so I went to Art Center, which is like a car design school. We study, you know, automotive engineering and car design, which is, you know, right. kind of like the Art Center. Yeah, and it's um, it's funny because I got into games. Oh man! So I had some teachers you all have probably heard of. Uh, Sit me. Uh, no, I wish. He did lecture once. He did lecture once, and he did go to Art Center, and he is like the guy that inspired me to go into cars because he was a car designer that did concept art, which is what I like to do. I don't design cars. I actually use those skills to design, you know, games and VR. But Sid Mead, uh, Craig Mullins uh, was a teacher there. Um, the guy that designed the original Shelby Mustang taught there. The guy that taught the uh, design the El Camino was a teacher of mine, Harry Bradley. A lot of famous guys. Um, a few women. Wow. Too. Not as many women, I have to say. Uh, women in cars are like, in the car industry are more rare than women in games. Like, it's that hard to find because it's such a male-dominated thing, which is unfortunate. Um, and people want to change that. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger by just scaling it, which is kind of cheating. So, like, technically, the rear tire is different dimensions, different proportions, different wall thickness, but I'm just going to cheat it for this to get it close. And then what you can do is go in here to the wheel, and because I want it to be wider in the back, I can just, like, select Do a clean collection. Do your yeah. You kind of have to hide the gizmo at times to, uh, oops, oops, oops. Here, so a little wider. Just flat. And I'm really being picky here. You don't have to do this, but I can't help myself. It looks clean when you do it, though. Yeah, it does. It's satisfying. And again, it's showing you the process, which is my most important goal here to get you to understand surface modeling. So you can see how you can extend something. Like that's a that's a quick way, right? And it feels like it. It's the same. The important thing is it's the same fidelity of 3D that everything else in your scene is. As long as everything's consistent, it feels right. If something's really clean, something else totally sketchy, that's when you don't. That's that's what you end up with in Maya and 3D versions. Okay, so you got these two now. Um, let's. You okay, might want to save that? at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. So now I'm going to start the body. So you've got your two wheels. Oh, the other thing is cars are like humans. They're bilaterally symmetrical, generally. So you only need to model one side and then here. So I'm going to work on the body. And the body is mostly 
few things. It's the grill with some details on the front. It's an engine block. And it's what we call the chassis or the body of the car, right? Um, if you look at the body of this car, you can break it down the same way as a wheel. Uh, open up some of this reference here. So, like, so do this one, for example, right? So if you look at this, this is a Ford, a 32 Ford. It's a very typical old car that people turn into hot rods. It's a beautiful shape, right? Um, it has the outboard wheels. Um, so, and by the way, when you look at this, notice all these little body details, this little bump here that, that's, this is stuff car designers love, these little blisters and bumps, and they sit here and, like, make them custom, you know. That kind of detail, you can't model in Quill, but what you can do is draw it the same way I was saying earlier with the gestural stuff, and it's actually even better, obviously, and it, it captures a nicer feeling than trying to sit there and model it super accurately, which you can do, but this is different. Okay, so looking at this, I want to start doing the body itself, so this, like, cowl area kind of thing is, like, the first thing I'll do. So essentially, um, using the ref, let's go back here. All right, let's, uh, let's make a new group. Call it body, and then in there, a uh, new paint layer, call it uh, body rain. Okay, and let's just start by sort of the same method. Um, you I'm put gonna, it in the wheel group, by the way. It doesn't matter right now, but I think it's in. It's inside oh, good one. Wheel. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's get that out of there. Okay, car all. So you got your wheels and you got your body. Um, okay, so starting here, I'm gonna like essentially draw. that's going to define the bottom edge of the car. And again, it does not have to be perfect. But one thing I know from cars is, and you can study it here, you can see it right here. This curve, it, it's subtle, but it goes in. It's like a bow. It's like a flattened cylinder. So this is not perfectly vertical to the ground. It's actually like this. And that is why cars reflect the ground plane. Otherwise, they only reflect the horizon. Um, so now I'm going to move that up. Tilt it a little bit. Let's turn, turn this on so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to redo. Redo, redo. What that does is it gives you a nice, clean, um, sort of continuous surface, if you actually do it right. <laughs> So let's do this a little bit action. And actually, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to redo this one. I'm going to redo the next one because I do want to break right there at that point. So now I'm going to go here. So is that this, is. Is this curve yeah. mainly for aerodynamics or is it actually for design so it reflects both. the environments nicely? Both, both. It reflects the environment nicely. So, one thing to keep in mind if you ever are in a 3D program and you want to check out reflections and play around with the reflective surfaces, do not use a cube. Do not use the cyber truck. Anything with flat <laughs> planes, flat planes uh, are tricky. They don't, you know, it only reflects one ray of light. A curve picks up a gradation, and so you get variation. Um, so that's one reason that cars, and then the other is structural. Like a flat plane is weaker than a, a bow or a curve. Um, and aerodynamics, is the other thing. So streamlined shapes are generally curved and teardropped, um, except for Cybertruck. Uh, okay, so there's this, right? So that's kind of your side door panel. Um, now I'm going to make this like part that curves here. So I'm going to use like a slightly different, like this, this brush is too fat. So I'll just do this. Okay. And then rotate, redo. 
And if I wanted to get accurate and do the interior of the car, I would stop here. Um, I would stop here, about here, and start doing this. Like the door panels going in, but uh, in this case, I don't care because I'm gonna, it's gonna be uh, not gonna be a convertible, I'm not gonna see the inside, so I'll just go like straight across. And I'm gonna go to about the width of the car. If the car is gonna be about uh, this wide, and I can discuss car widths later, but essentially, so. Two two squares here is about the car. So about that. All right. So there's that shape. You got that going. Um, now, you don't quite see the curve of this until you start to actually paint it. And this is where you have to understand what Goro talked about last week. Is the lighting. Where's my light coming from? What's the environment? All this kind of stuff matters. So I'm going to show you how to make this look like that, essentially. Let's hide the reference. Okay. So. I'm going to just close those gaps. Okay, good enough. Um, what's happening here is the sky is reflecting on this top plane all these and go in here and just you know put in the purple of the sky just it in there um, there's a break here in this surface and that's why I'm going to grab all of these continuous curved surfaces before they break again give them a dusting as well however they are facing a lower part of the sky, so they're a little more um, orange. So they will actually look like this. And then this is reflecting the ground plane. However, at the horizon, it's going to reflect the dark stuff out here. So I will basically sample the ground color. You dust it on. Really, that's what you really need. Um, but you know, you can go crazy. And like, you know, I want to really darken this. By the way, you get something to really, really shine. The difference between like lacquer paint and brushed metal is this edge here is sharp or blurry. In brushed metal, this edge will blur. This edge here between your sky and your horizon. In a reflective paint, it'll be sharp, sharp, sharp. In chrome, it'll be as sharp as you can imagine. The highest contrast is chrome or a mirror. So technically, that's a little bit shinier all of a sudden than, you know. And you can put variations in it like that, just to, so it's not so mechanical. Um, but let's just say it's something like this, and since it's black, it really will be generally more uh, dark than light. So, okay, so something like that. And same with the sky, it will generally darken. And the core shadow will also of your horizon be a little bit. You have 40 minutes in mind. That's cool. It'll, it's actually going to come together pretty quick. Okay, so then you got this. Now, let's go back to reference. Okay, so I've got that. Now I want to do this back part. Um, same thing. Uh, I'm going to start by doing, there's a couple of ways to do this. So I would do, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't always. I don't always, but I did in this case because I wanted to show you the. Uh, oh, by the way, when you're when you got reference, it just seeps through everything. Yeah. So the only select that color select that because um, when you in this case I'm going to show you modeling, but also it is nice to have the wheels there because it gives you the sense of the spacing of the car. Like the most important dimension in a car is its wheel base. The distance from this center to this center determines a lot of things. Sports cars, um, compact cars all have a different wheel base. Um, so that's one reason. Okay, I wanted to get that back part. So I'm going to kind of go with that. This is where Quill's other brushes are nice. Um, it's probably better to use this one with the curved end to do this. Um, by the way, the wheels are outboard on this car, so let's go and grab all of the body. Move it in. Outboard meaning um, the body of the car and the, the wheels are actually sticking out, not under, inside the car. Like, uh, oops. You see how they're actually this one's better. See, the wheels here are out of the car. In a normal car, that is a cutout, and the wheels stuck in. So outboard means out. So I just moved the body in, essentially. Um, so there's body main. What are we at? Okay. So. You have to move the reference, I think, because you moved the car in. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. The reference is not so accurate. I just wanted to get a rough idea. And it shows you, like, again, you know, you could be really accurate use blueprints, uh, or you can just gauge it. You really want to get the general proportions of front, side, top. Um, And let's see. So it kind of does this like sweep in the back like that, which is cool. Um, so one thing you can do here, right, is let's see. So I probably do it. But looking at it from here, I want to make sure and get that nice curve that you notice in a car from there. So it's like what Daniel, I think, uh, was saying, um, also Goro, about silhouette is really important. Same thing with cars with anything, really. You want to look at it from the angles, make sure your outer silhouette feels right. Uh, that's how you define form, most importantly. Like your eye sees that outer silhouette more than anything else. Um, okay, so now straight across. Okay, so now we've got that. Now to do the uh, dip part, you know, there's a bunch of these. You can either do it like this, where Like you could either do it like this. Uh, or you can do it like, I mean, there's a lot of ways. One, another way to do it is really to draw it. 
and then use the grab tool, which I've also done. So you can do that, that, I think you're nudging, not grabbing. Oh, I might. Oh, geez, get it right. So, well. Do this. Right. That fillet work, the, the intersection between that and the next um, plane change. Um, so that's one way, right? Or the other way is you construct it first. Selecting and reselecting things, but it resets the axis as well to the cardinal axis because it keeps the last one you have. Um, so you can do it this way and then use the grab tool on that. Like if, instead of using it on a ribbon, you freehand drew a more sort of uh, machined or sort of depending on how many of these processes you need. A little more of a like a regular shape, right? <laughs> Valued apples, right? And then that's that part. Then you want to get let's do the reference. Okay, so this dips like this. It just goes like whoop, right down to a flat. So um. Actually, when I notice that, I just want to draw it like this, probably. Yeah, probably like this. So you can start with one of these and go in this direction instead. That's essentially what I think it's similar to. It is more of the. Yeah. Okay, so. That, and then. On. Just angle that a little bit, right? And then get some chest meets. Okay. It meets that surface right there, that corner. All right, and then grab, grab that. You want to catch the major plane changes. We're not as concerned about the super detail of stuff. Um, so to close this, this is generally, honestly, it's just one of these. It's, it's really just a 
You're at fifty minutes. Uh, you want to go a bit over today, or? Yeah, I don't like. See how far we get. Um, it's it's really going to come together quite as soon as we get like mirrored. See it. Want to show you how to do like the detail in the Okay, something like this. And then. What's the information you want to send? What do you say? I'm going to show you. The idea of the ground plane. Um, so, draw the shark. Okay. And like the wheel itself is reflecting back into the chrome. So, yeah, it is going to be black right there, probably. Um, And the reflection being sort of uh, the horizon being a clean, straight line is important. Otherwise, cars feel like they don't, they're not mechanical, they're not organic, they're organic. So let's get that continued. And this is where the number of ribbons matters, right? You want to you wanna be able to, again, continue that reflection line across you want to make sure that horizon continues these little overlaps are fine because that's actually just what your reflect it actually makes your reflection look better right because that's what you would actually see is small inconsistency um the key is you want this and this to be about the same color and same with this and this and this as well. Sky. Now you can really see it. You can push it in where it needs to go. And then it's like just do the dodge. And this is where dodge is important, like Goro said. Your base colors are set. This is like a diffuse. Now I want to heighten. I'm not adding any new hues to anything, I'm heightening what's already there. So dodge makes sense. Um, maybe, you know, it'll, it'll catch a highlight there. Another way to do this, you don't have enough verts to get a nice highlight, right? To get a tight one. And so what I would do instead is draw it. It's again where Quill rocks versus Maya. I have to, the number of camera moves, material tweaks, just to get a highlight to show from my camera view, when I can just do this. It is um, really nice. And, you know, it's also like when you card and then you do this. You do, you do those. Where, like, there's a name for that kind of highlight where it's, like, tapered. Uh, it's kind of what Daniel did, too, on the character. Sweet particle, yep. Um, your highest peak of reflection is usually at the horizon line or where, where things turn. And that's again where I love how Quill gives you a stylized feel. Like that feels illustrated. And that card is something to do this stuff. The other thing is, if you notice the reference guy. Back to these details here, this this sort of ribbing and filleting and things like that, those details are really prized by car buffs so that is done really nicely in quill by just doing um 
doing it as illustration lines. Like, you would just see this, and I can even taper it nicely. So I do that, and then do the bright version up here. So now that kind of starts to feel like it has like a nice little detail there if I can go as much stronger too. Right, and then you can get you can that up the way you would in an illustration too, which is nice. Really good freedom path. Um, so do you usually do the highlights and what you're doing right now? Do you do it in like um, on the fly like this, or do you usually make sure that you end. have your body? I would first do the body, but I'm trying to give you like a slice of how it works uh, yeah. first. But it doesn't matter really if you do it this way or the other way, um, as long as you know what you're doing. Uh, I want to mostly get the bottom of the car. Sometimes it helps me also to do a little bit of the reflection just so mm -hmm. I see the form in general, right? But then it's I do true. the refinements at the end. You're right. I agree. I, I, I often don't do it, but then sometimes it is nice. So I did it also for myself there, not just for you guys, but like, yeah, sometimes I need to check it, make sure it works. Um, that's like where the car turns under. Another thing that really gives it a sense of 3D-ness here. All you're really doing is, is following that curve. So same as around the back. These want to reflect this horizon color. And this, oops. wants to the crisp of this land is the shinier the paint looks um and the higher contrast it is the shinier it looks the higher um the higher contrast and the sharper the uh, horizon line is in the reflection, the um, shinier the material appears. So it's low contrast right now, lower contrast, and I'm going to pump up the contrast, and you can see that it makes it feel shinier um, because that's just how it works. Uh, the shinier, the more reflective, the more pure environment you see. Um, this wants to be a nice, consistent color that matches this roughly, right? Um, and then these, which are pointing upwards, want to match this. Right, so now that looks like a slab of soap, which is kind of what you want, made out of chrome, essentially black chrome. Um, We're at the one hour mark. Just oh, so you know. wow! Okay, so there's <laughs> that. Right, there's that. Now, um, I mean, this is what happens to all these demos. We wind up continuing them, so I guess I could try to continue this one next week. It's going to be tough for me. This particular week, but um, I'm fine continuing if you guys don't care. Okay. It shouldn't go too long. I would say, like, if you find like a place where you can cut off the stream, like, yeah, you know, like then, by, by finishing maybe that rear portion, you know, yep, and maybe then uh, we can do a part two. We can do a part two, even if it's not directly next week, right? Um, 
I'm going to do a front of this guy quickly. Let's aim for going about 15 minutes over or something. Okay. 15, give, me 20 a, minutes. Give, me a, give me a time when you get there. Okay. I don't want to distract uh, you, or maybe Goro can answer it, but do you guys run into problems with highlights? Where in VR, because you change the viewport, viewpoints, mm -hmm. then the highlights look out of whack? Uh, yes. It really depends on, um, you know, where you put them. You know, you can always design exactly. it towards the view. So um, also like the way you treat them, like, for example, um, what Mike mentioned before with the wheel caps, um, he's not going to move them when he animates them. So it looks like uh, a real reflection because reflections don't rotate like a texture, right? So um, same thing with um, eyeball highlights, for example, uh, in, a, in the iris you could actually literally sculpt an eye the way it's like shaped like um i think mike mentioned the death star last year uh, last last week um yeah. it's the shape of a death star so if you put um if you um, indent the area of the iris and you just put a highlight where it would be on the cornea then it will look correct it will behave like a real highlight so there's like a lot of tricks you can do to behave it like um it would in like reality but um like you see here um uh mike has been faking the highlights and it still looks good even if you rotate you know and even if the highlights don't move it still looks good like like as you can see he's rotating and the highlights look fine so it's more about knowing exactly how highlights work and then you just fake it like where is this the other thing too is, I mean, you don't have to use this, but I have played with this before. You can use the directional brush to draw the highlight and draw them differently, but so that like it it fades away at some points. But then you want another one to appear at the right angles. You can play with that, but I find like Doro said, it almost doesn't matter. place it roughly close. Also it depends on your camera angles. If I was going to shoot this from here, I probably would not. You know, I'd pick a different highlight or maybe do a different one. Um, okay, so you got that. The other thing is, like, uh, the lines and cut lines of doors are really important. So I'll just show you that, too. Like, you know, there's a, there's a door gap here. Would you do these on an extra layer, actually? Or... Yeah, sure. <laughs> now I'm just mm -hmm. asking because that stuff... Uh, oh, would I? Would I? Yeah. Um, maybe not the door gap, however... What I would do on the extra layer would probably be the interior, the glass, and the right. dome. I mean, right now, I'll do extra layers till the end of time because I want to combine them. But to get it for Quest, you know, you do want to keep it minimal. Um, so I don't. Not for that. Like, that's cool. Like, the door cut line is really important in a car, too, right? So, like that. And then what I do with Quill is, uh, you know, doesn't have to be deadly accurate again. But you want to get, duplicate it, color it to get the highlight. That way it feels like a, um, it feels 3D. I mean, this is how I would actually sketch it. If you're doing car illustration, you know, you draw the line of the cut line of the door and you draw a highlight for that just to show someone that's where I'm going to put the door. Um, so, so there's that. You see, this, to me, this is way more powerful than if I had to sit here and model this in ZBrush and make a mask for a door and blah, blah, blah. I will do that. I will when I want to render this properly. But to get the rough idea, I can do 50 hot rods in that time with different <laughs> door cuts and show it to someone and they get the idea and then go in and do the detailed version with normal maps. Um, okay, so I got that. Now I'm going You might to... want to save again. Yeah. yeah. So there's and... this. And then uh, let's, I guess let's just do the canopy quickly and then dupe it. That'll be enough for today, probably. That'll probably be 15. Uh, the canopy's really quick, too. It's like... Uh, 
Canopy. Turn on the reference. Um, uh, so the canopy is pillars, A pillar, B pillar, C pillar, and the roof line. And the sill, essentially. Okay, that. And then you've got the where it turns. And then you've got the roof, which is bowed. But what I'll do with that is draw a flat and then go, uh, grab tool that. Oops. Oops. I usually like, um, completely eliminate the inner radius so you get like a super soft like you have like the inner radius pretty strong right yeah, i just totally. do that and then you can just push it yeah, up ever so good. slightly yeah and make it super large yeah so uh, right. and you're using your drawing here too which is nice just to get that curve rough um and then just So grab that guy and use thicken, you know, like that. And then grab it. And you can get crazy accurate with this, or Stylize it. But those little breaks are not bad because that's, again, that's like the disturbance in the reflection map that looks pretty believable anyway. Um, and then I just want to colorize it. Don't think. This stuff is facing horizon, so it's going to go to this color. And the stuff that's facing sky. It's that, and then you can go, you know, like, this is where you're going to dodge. Again, where this is bending, there's like a tight radius right here. I don't have to model it. I can illustrate it by just doing a gradation. Now it feels like it's turning. Um, same here. I want to grab this guy 
and just give it a little bit of a gradation to the warm down here. That indicates that this is also slightly bending. Sorry. Right. And let's see. So that's pretty good right there. Um same with the back, you know, it's it's gonna be just as quick to the back of these things like Okay, normally don't freehand, but it would be something like this. Back glass. Okay. okay, we'll do that roughly. Right, and then you want to grab these guys and also do a grab tool. Okay, like that. The warbles you can sit here and get rid of, but it's all about. See how I'm changing my eye angle? That's how you. The, the warbles, these little S shapes, because, you know, reflections generally, that, that's like, oh, was the car in an accident? Why? Why did it have, you know? So, keeping reflections smooth and continuous makes things look generally more machined. Um, so this is not the ideal way to do this guy, like whatever. Right. And you can also do this with a tube by the way, that's another way to do that. Just draw a tube, taper it, stick it in there. It'll actually look probably really good. Um, but the idea is the same. The idea is that you're, you know, modeling by doing profiles and curves and intersections. Okay, so there's that. Uh, and doing the front, same thing. It's like. Oops. By being using the line tool, you guarantee you're drawing on a cardinal axis. It's not off, off tilt. Um, on a hot rod, the windshield is pretty vertical. In a regular car, it's not. Um, I will grab these two and just grab tool them to get them to like. Not ideal, but it works. Cool, something like that, right? Um, and then for glass, same thing. I would do glass as a new layer. Glass. Um, don't use transparency if you don't have to. Uh, it's nicer to just use uh, solids. So, like. The glass will generally be reflecting the environment. So, okay, this is probably going to be, and I'll use this guy as I can get. For this type of hot rod, uh, it could be like super tinted glass, but if 
if you want to look inside, oh, yeah. obviously you can use transparency, but um, the recommendation is, I think I've said it a few times before, but using layer transparency versus variable transparency uh, versus brush transparency. So layer yeah. transparency, 25%, 50% or 75 looks best uh, on both Quest and Rift. And also when you uh, record videos, um, you might have noticed if you have variable transparency that you see a lot of grain when you capture videos, and that's because of the way transparency is computed um, via dithering technique. So it looks good on Rift, but it doesn't look good in a video. So uh, make sure if you use transparency to use um, 25, 50, or 75% layer opacity for best results. Wait, let's... Bottoms, they are usually tinted, so I would brow all the glass. And this is what's fun, too, is you can darken. Um, and you go all the way black. It can be darker than the... It can be darker than the metal, right? Um, or you can do that and dust some blue on there. And really, all that matters, because these are flat planes, is a gradation. This is almost enough, and really, it's almost arbitrary sometimes where it comes from. Um, the other thing, too, is big plane changes. So front to side would be good to, to differentiate, say, that. And then maybe the back is more, has more of the orange to it or something. You're 20 minutes in. Okay. So that's 20 minutes over, I mean. Um, that's basically what, what I wanted to cover, right? And then well, the, the last thing is you could do, like, stylized reflections. You could do this kind of stuff, too. Um, you know, the way you would, again, if you were illustrating. You might do this. And that cool, like I can't do that in my eye, and I can, and that's my style, it's like only something I can do, and that's where I would do this kind of stuff. Like, I want to get the door thickness, right? Um, or the opposite, like that, um. Or use uh, this brush so that you don't have to be, doesn't look like a ribbon. It actually looks 3D. So that, you show you different techniques. So here's here's a highlight. This indicates like, oh, there's a little ring light right there. Um, same thing here. You know, you One thing to it. note, um, I also uh, mentioned it in my optimization tutorial, but um, different brushes cause uh, draw calls. So draw calls. In this, yeah, in this totally. case, it's fine because uh, um, um, Mike is not planning to put like crazy, like a lot of characters in there or something. It's only the car, so it doesn't really yeah, apply. No. But um, if you have multiple different brush strokes in one layer, you will see that the draw calls um, go okay. up. So just be aware of that. Like that, this, uh, th so far I've used this, this, and this. Yeah. which is three draw calls when I could have done it all with this. So that's a great example. And I didn't really need the ribbon brush for this, the, the disc brush. I just kind of was trying to show you a different way to use it. Ideally, yes, I would not use anything but this flat brush. Um, or I would sacrifice and use two of them, but that's a, that doubles your draw count. Uh, and then everything pointing to the ground, this is what Daniel was doing too with the like lips and eyelids and things like that is... Is this right? So now I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's like that's like got some thickness to it. Um, and that's essentially it. That is how you will get to this um, tail lights, same thing. It's like just draw. And this is also where it's really nice. I can do you know, I can do that, and it looks way cooler than. Um, okay. 
Okay, so there's that. And then, uh, yeah, the rest is mostly just the duplicate and mirror. So now I'm going to grab this whole body. Yeah, I wonder if we want to save this for, like, when you start yeah. the engine and stuff, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The complete half. Oh, yeah, there you go. and even, <laughs> even, like, the flames and things like that would be nice. Um, yeah, why don't, we, why don't we stop it here, and I'll, I can finish the uh, painting the one half duping it and then quickly showing you the drive loop with the animations because that doesn't yeah i think like complicated long. stuff like the engine would be definitely nice to see um too and um if you're sure because that's that's really different right like i won't with the engine i won't sit here and model it this way it'll be about yeah. primitives so yeah, yeah. different you want to save um, at this point yeah yeah save it and then there will be a part two of this class yeah, part two. Um, okay, I'm going to stop the stream now. I mean, stop the recording.